Are you going up to the front table over there? Where? The one that I pulled you from? Oh, okay. James. James, wait. Who are they? Uh, Some strangers. They just walked in and I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> We're the best. They're wonderful people. Yeah. Okay. The best table. Yeah, you got about 10 minutes here. All right. Enjoy your Adam West. Yes, yes. I am. Absolutely. Good, good. Got to do that. <laughs> so why do you think after 50 years, uh, why do you think after 50 years your version of Batman still resonates with you? I'm so damn good. <laughs> uh, I think because, uh, you know, we played it for the whole family spec. You know, so the kids would enjoy the excitement and whatever. And uh, the adults would laugh because it was a comedy. And, um, you know, when we delivered um, those holidays and little ethical lessons, like good dental hygiene even, <laughs> it, you know, the, the, the adults thought, that's pretty good that our kids are listening to that. And, uh, the, you know, the kids took it seriously. You did, did. Absolutely. <laughs> High drama. <laughs> and action. Absolutely. <laughs> what, was it like in, sorry, what was it like getting back into the headspace of Batman again? Repeat, there was a noise. Sorry, what was it like getting back into the headspace again? Was it a challenge to get back into the character? No, not really. You know, when you do something for maybe three years and you play that every day and, and think about it and try to do little things, whatever you can do with the character, uh, and to make it funny and yet really sincere for the children, um, you just pull on that cowl and you're right back there. Now, I didn't pull on the cowl because somebody stole it. But <laughs> all, all I had to do was go in and, you know, a little sense of memory there and, and uh, enthusiasm when it comes back. How did the whippersnappers do compared to Lorenzo Semple and uh, the guys that were writing for you back in the 60s? Oh, they were so good. My God. Lorenzo won the New York Film Critics Award. Uh, he, he was a remarkable writer, and I was privileged to have him writing you know, for us. He and I became great friends. Really? Yeah. Cool. And, um, you know, today's writing, it doesn't differ so much because the writers with whom I work, at least with the Batman stuff, they've been very good. Like, did you interview one of the writers? Yes. Both of yeah. yeah. Everybody. Yeah, yeah he's, he's terrific. And, you know, for them to have, well, what they did, I think, you know, I'm a, I'm a senior superhero, but they grew up with me. So they had a pretty good sense of what they wanted, you know, with, within the, the dimensions of their memories. And it worked. So I got a hand in there, you know. Uh, maybe what I did was a development. <laughs> what are the differences between playing Batman with your voice versus playing him on screen? The difference might be that with the voice only and with the audience that they were really seeking mostly, that is the kids, it was more straight ahead and less nuance, less tongue-in-cheek, you know, that kind of thing that you could do on film with your, your movement or whatever you're thinking, even through the eye holes in the cowl. And, and, but when you're doing, you know, voiceover like this, um, it was just dead ahead and, you know, right on and serious kind of work. And then I had a few moments where I could, you know, throw a little something here and there with the adults. You know, through your inspiration and the original interpretation of the character, you go back, I'm sure you were a fan of old radio, it wasn't old radio in your time. Were there, were there old radio heroes that you modeled your Batman after? No. <laughs> but that's a good question because, um, you know, I still on, on Sirius, you know, on the, what do you call it, satellite radio, I listen to some of those old shows occasionally because they were so good, allowing you to use your imagination. And I learned, oh 
ease from that a little more. Yeah. And, you know, when you think of Orson Welles and Joseph Cotton and the Mercury Theater, whatever it was, wow, that was so good. Uh, I started in radio. That's awesome. In, yeah. In college. Do dramas. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. And then I was a disc jockey and a lot of stuff, a news guy. And, and uh, you know, I think many actors that I've talked to or learned about, they really did radio. Except the younger ones, the mostly they don't, they do. They, they don't have the same opportunities of, you know, getting a job and working your way through it up. Yeah. Too many people go to Hollywood and are disenchanted. You know, they, they, they find it so tough. And it is. It's so terribly competitive now. Because look at all the windows we have, all the outlets for content. I don't know how people keep track of that. I'll watch TV and tune around until my wife says, Stop it! You know? <laughs> but I'll tune around and and I'm amazed at all the different content and, and the way it's delivered. Nothing seems really special anymore. The Walking Dead? Huh? Maybe that's special. <laughs> scares the hell out of me. Uh, I don't know, but there, there, there just seem to be so many shows from which to choose. You know, you hardly know what to watch. Are you into any specific shows right now yourself? Anything? Say it again. Are you into any specific shows right now yourself? Are you, do you watch anything or look forward to well, anything that's know, going on right funny, now? Last night, um, I turned on the television in the hotel. And I saw something that intrigued me. Uh, no, I'm sorry, it was on the airplane. Uh, they had pilots. And this was called the billionaire, billion, billions of the billionaire or something. And I saw that and I thought, God, I this is good. But you know, it didn't sell, it didn't go. Oh, wow. And uh, do you know anything about that? The Not that show. Billions of the billionaire. Oh, you oh, uh, Billions? Yeah. Is yes. that the Showtime show? Yeah, with um, Paul Giamatti. That's right. right. Yeah. Yes, it was about the That's financial right. investigator. Yeah, that's that made right. it, yeah, that made it to a series. It had a full, it had a full yeah, season. Yeah, it's gone. It did? Yeah, and I think it's doing well. Yeah, I think it oh, will be back. Oh, good. <laughs> that was really good. There you go. And the red-headed guy, the young actor who played the big-time uh, hedge fund guy. Yes. Yeah, I forget his oh, name. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right. Yes. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. What's his name? Damien. Is it Damien? Damien. Uh, yeah. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I'll cool. buy that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was good. Okay. So, you see, you make discoveries like that, but... It went four seasons? No, this is the first season, first season. But, yeah. it, but it's going to... Yeah. It, I think it got picked up. Got it, picked it is up. coming back. That's yeah. good. Because not many shows get picked up. Yeah. Now, when I did the Big Bang Theory, you know, kind of stunt casting thing. <laughs> What's an Affleck? You know, that kind of thing. It was fun and kind of funny, but... Um, to get a show picked up every season for how many years? 12 years or something? Nine or 10, at least. Yeah, 10. 10. 10. 10. Our family guys, I've done it for 12 years <laughs> as the mayor. The loony mayor, which is kind of fun. But some shows do hit a stride and they get picked up. So many don't. Such a waste of money and talent. I would say, um, we're in an interesting moment in Batman history. There's at least six different actors currently playing Batman. But you're also the original, um, at least for, for most fans. Do you have any advice that you would give any other Batman running around? What's essential to the character? What do you think? When you guys all get together for the <laughs> Yeah, there are a lot of them running around. Um, let the costume work for you on the screen. And, uh, you know, you can be violent, you can be downtrodden, vengeful, 
whatever you're doing with the character. But uh, don't take yourself too seriously. You know. What about the chemistry between yourself, Bert, and Julie? Coming back to that, what was what was that? Was it easy? I mean, actually, did you guys were you able to tailor read together, or did you do it all separately? Separately. Oh, okay. But in your mind, yeah, it was easy. <laughs> <laughs> You know, when, they're, when you know their action, you know what they're going to do with it. And you played the character for a long time. It, it came back instantly. All I had to do was listen for a moment in my head or whatever they were showing with the animation. Yeah. And this was uh, kind of neat too because you could work uh, from the animation, lip sync. And uh, many times, uh, you know, they'll photograph you in the role, like the mayor and family guy. And then they'll have that film to you know, look at and base the animation on, which is a different thing. But this time, Batman, you know, you just looked at the animation and lip synced it. You know, tried to do the rhythms. It wasn't tough. <laughs> Did you have an urge to like, try something different? Or... Yes. <laughs> yes, at this moment. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I really would. Uh, well, I think all actors, yeah, I'd love, uh, you know, uh, I look all the time for material that might be challenging or fun or fun. And, and uh, something that might work for an old catcher. Uh, it just seems irredeemably awful. <laughs> would you want to do another of these? Uh oh, trick question. You're leading me into the thing that I'm not supposed to say. <laughs> they told us you could say it, so it's all good. Yeah, yeah. Well, if, 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 you're, if you're there tonight, you're going to find out. You made me so nervous. I have a gag order. <laughs> One of the other things that I'd be original. I have to take him away. All right. All right. It's all good. Thank you. Ed. Thanks, Mr. Thank West. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. No applause. <laughs>